Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for attending this talk. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a small but handy tool called uh, Syspatch. So uh, quickly, who am I? Uh, so my name is Antoine. Uh, I'm known as uh, AJ Kuto or AJA at OpenBSD.org. I'm also part of the uh, GNOME Foundation, and I mostly work on anything that helps me put uh, OpenBSD into production. Uh, and for work, I'm uh, head of SRE at uh, Vente Privé. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, Syspatch. Syspatch is both a tool and a build framework for patches. Uh, the main tool is uh, basically a very small shell script, uh, 220 line of code. And then we have the build framework that's under user source, the distrib syspatch, which is the usual source tree of uh, your OpenBSD uh, installation. That's mainly BSD make files that uh, replicate what the uh, release build process does on OpenBSD as well as our port tree. During this talk, I'm going to talk about binary patch. Um, that's not really uh, accurate because we're not doing binary diffing, um, but we're actually providing a new version of binaries, libraries, etc. Uh, it's just easier to refer to them as, uh, as binary patches, though. So first of all, a little bit of history. Um, anyone who had to actually maintain uh, OpenBSD boxing uh, in production um, more than a dozen of them uh, hit this horrible requirement is that you cannot easily keep your system up to date. What I call up to date is not upgrade from one release to another, but just to keep uh, up to date regarding uh, security and reliability patches. So up until syspatch, you had basically two solutions. Either you CVS up and then you have to recreate a complete release. Um, of course, you have to do that uh, to, to do everything manually. You have to use Signify to verify that uh, the actual uh, stuff that you download uh, is um, is uh, valid. Um, so the two different things you could do is build a release from scratch, CVA sub from stable, or you keep the uh, the, uh, the for example 6.2 release and you manually patch it, and you build only the small part that you want it to be patched. The big issue with that is that if, for example, you have a security issue in your lib crypto, then, of course, we rebuild it with the patch. That was install a shared library, but also a stat static uh, library. The problem with static library is that anything in the base system that is actually using this library will not be rebuilt. So basically, you're like half patch, really. So the only real way was to build a complete release from scratch, and that's a huge pain because that means that if you want to update a group of machines, then you have to uh, do a really, really big upgrade, which is like the same, basically the same thing that you would do from one upgrade to uh, one release, sorry, to a release uh, plus one. So it was really tedious to, uh, to, to maintain uh, Boxen. A few years ago, I was uh, hired uh, in a company called MTR. Uh, the company, um, one of the company's job was to put uh, OpenBSD machines into production, both servers and workstation. So we had a huge pool of OpenBSD machines to maintain all over the globe. And of course, using official uh, update uh, facility was really tedious. So we came up, uh, we came up with a, a tool. Um, to provide binary patches for the OpenBSD base system. Uh, the tool was based on the package tool. Um, like when you have a new patch, you just install the package. There was two issues with that. Uh, while it works relatively fine, uh, it really abuses the package tool framework. Uh, also, you will get a mismatch binary, um, well, mismatch signatures in your packages when you upgrade to a new release. Let's say, for example, you uh, upgrade libcrypto using a, using a patch. Then the package tool framework will um, record the um, checksum of the binary. Of course, when you later upgrade to the new release, then the package will still be installed. But of course, the library will have changed. So there were all kind of stuff like that that were not really, really nice, I would say. Um, so we come up with a small wrapper script called OpenUp. Uh, which is again a, a, a shell wrapper that we use to uh, to keep both the base system and the package up to date. And 
it's a wrapper because it was doing some stuff around uh, behind the scenes to uh, to deal with uh, the checksum mismatch and stuff like that. So it works nicely. It was a bit ugly, and the main issue was that it was not official. So while there were there were there are a few OpenBSD developer hired by this company, it's still not a OpenBSD provided uh, way to stay up to date. So now, situation today. Um, so Syspatch landed in OpenBSD on September 2016. Uh, it was the result of a hackathon in Cambridge. Uh, and that's a joint work uh, between Robert Nagy and myself. The first supported release was OpenBSD 6.1, so that is the previous release since we're at 6.2 today. Um, so this tool only makes sense on official releases and kernel. You cannot use it if you're using like current or if you use it using stable. It's really meant to uh, be an additional layer on top of your of a regular release. Uh, as of today, we support AMD 64, RE386, and ARM64. Um, we only support the uh, last uh, release. So that means that as of today, we don't support 6.1 anymore. Although it is still supported, um, uh, patches are still available that has CVS patches. Reason for that is a uh, lack of manpower. Um, and also what's important is that this tool is really a very small and stupid tool, so we really only want to use it to uh, keep uh, be up to date regarding security and reliability. It's not a, a new release upgrade tool. And why a shell script? Well, basically because everything we had to uh, basically implement uh, this feature were already in the base system. We just had to orchestrate them. So, shell script. Um, before coming up with, uh, with Syspatch, we started looking a bit about uh, what the others uh, were doing. So in Linux, most of the time, everything is a package. So you don't really have to deal with that. You, you can run your DNF upgrade or, or apt upgrade or whatever. Um, as I said, uh, our intent was completely different. We don't want to be a release upgrade tool. We want to be a maintenance tool. Uh, also, sometimes rollbacks are tricky when everything is a package. So. Then we looked at uh, FreeBSD. Uh, to be honest, we've been jealous uh, about FreeBSD update for, for quite a long time. Uh, we looked into implementing it, um, but that was quite complicated, uh, much too clever, basically, for us, or at least for me. Um, also, it's very slow. It's horribly slow. And um, it's also a tool that will basically allow you to, to upgrade to a newer release. And so that's something we didn't want to do. And that, that's also is part of the complication of the tool. <coughs> and regarding NetBSD and Dragonfly, as far as I know, it's, uh, it's source only. So Syspatch. Um, as I said, Syspatch is a really, really simple tool. Uh, you have uh, four options that we will detail later. Uh, but basically, if you run it without any argument, it will uh, install all the, the missing patches automatically. You don't have to pass it any option or anything. So it's just a small utility that, that will basically fetch and install uh, binary patches and rollback, of course. Um, within the script, we implemented a small unprev function. Um, this function is used to uh, lose privileges while doing some sensitive stuff, like going online or like doing cryptographic verification and stuff like that. So it's really stupid. We're using our uh, own SU um, to do that. We, uh, we drop privileges to a user called underscore syspatch, and then we do the, the, the dangerous stuff. That's exactly what the OpenBSD installer does, and we wanted to uh, mimic that behavior. Uh, we also, well, you, you may be able, you, you may want to pass an argument, sorry, uh, to this function, like you may want to as an unprivileged user, go online. Uh, but of course, you want to have the right to sometime download something and write it somewhere. So with the minus F function, uh, the privilege, um, the, the losing of the privilege will happen after that the file uh, has been created. Uh, so as I said, everything that's uh, network related or crypto related will be uh, done using this function, which is basically what we do in Syspatch to, uh, to fetch the, uh, the SHA-256 signature file. 
So let's look a bit uh, about the options. So we have a syspatch minus C. Uh, that's basically check. So check what the uh, what available patches um, are around. Uh, so what it does, it does it, it will fetch the uh, signature file. Uh, we're using the command that was in the previous slide. Uh, it will verify it using signify, um, and then it will parse and compare uh, what's inside that signature file to the installed patch on the system. And from that, it will build a list and display what's missing. Nice thing to note is it's automatically run by our RC system uh, once you upgrade to a new release. So that means that you will see in your G message output if you have missing patches, and it will send a mail to a root as well. We have uh, the uh, minus L option, so that's to list the, actually, the actual installed patch. Uh, it's a really stupid function. It will just lo look into, uh, into a specified directory, that's a varsis patch, and see if there's uh, anything there. If there are, that means that we have patches that are installed on the system, and in this case, it will, it will list them. Now we have syspatch without any option. Uh, as I mentioned, that's what will install all the missing patches on your machine. Um, so it does a few checks before. Um, it removes anything that doesn't match the actual release and that's stored under a Varsys patch. The hierarchy uh, there um, contained the actual CVS div patch, so you can know exactly uh, what the patch does. And it also contains the rollback uh, patch. If something, is, if something bad happened on the machine, you can easily roll back uh, using that. But there is no garbage collection between releases. Like for example, you have 10 patches installed on your machine, you upgrade to a new release, then this directory is still full of the old patch and rollback files. So the first thing that syspatch does is remove all the non-matching stuff there. And then it will compare uh, the, your install patches against uh, the available one using pretty much the same function that used to list and, and check for patches. And then it will loop, uh, doing the unprev download and verification of uh, the tarball, the remote tarball that are on our mirror server. It will do a few checks, like uh, make sure that we're writing on the local file system, not on NFS, that uh, we have enough space, that uh, the file system is not read-only, stuff like that. And from there, uh, we pick the uh, actual list of files that we're going to install from the TarGZ, <laughs> and then we create a rollback tarball using the actual files that are on the system. Um, and then we save, uh, once we have do done that, we save install uh, the patches that are contained, uh, the files, sorry, that are contained in our patch. Uh, we're using install minus capital S, which is the, uh, the safe install. Uh, that unlinks the existing target be before installing a new file. Um, and then at the end of the run, uh, if a new kernel was installed, that is, if it was a kernel patch, then we run a reorder kernel. Uh, reorder kernel um, is what we call call uh, on OpenBSD, so it's a pretty new feature that I think it landed like, a, not like six, eight months ago. It uh, means kernel address randomized link, um, and it's basically a random, random randomization feature uh, that we added to our kernel. Um, it shuffles the uh, object linking order, um, and it does that at every reboot. So like each kernel that you guys run on OpenBSD are completely different one from one uh, another. So like the internal delta between the functions inside the kernel um, or not where one would expect them to be, which makes some uh, particular case of tax uh, way more difficult. It's, uh, it's different from KSLR, uh, which is what I think they're doing on Linux, uh, but it has a similar goal. So basically, we don't, we, we don't need to, to uh, load the kernel in a random location because the, the kernel itself is randomized. So that, that's the main difference between CARL and uh, KSLR. We have the uh, minus R option, which uh, will roll back the last installed patch. Uh, it's important to note uh, that you cannot choose which patch you want to install. All patches are cumulative. If you want to roll back a patch, you have to roll back the entire sequence of patch that uh, were before this one. So that's why you can only always uh, roll back the last in installed one. 
So what it does basically it does the same kind of checks uh, as we do when installing patches. Uh, and then it will get the uh, rollback table from the var syspatch directory and uh, extract it. And then, of course, remove the, uh, the old syspatch directory. And then we relink the kernel if needed. And we have the uh, minus capital R, uh, which is basically remove all the patches. Um, we had a few use cases in the past for that, so that was, it was implemented. Uh, and of course, as anything in syspatch, it stops at the first error. Um, so that's how to uh, basically handle the patches. So let, let's have a look at how the uh, process and the building of patches works. Um, so first of all, uh, someone notice an issue uh, with the code. So they will tell the developer, eh, your code sucks or whatever, has a security issue in it. So we create a fix. We get, uh, of course, validation and review. It is committed to cur current. And then uh, Bloom uh, will backport it to, to stable and create the uh, initial errata uh, file. <coughs> TJ will then review the patch, uh, write the uh, W changes on our website, and uh, we'll create an announcement. <coughs> Then Theo uh, will sign the patch. Uh, only a handful of people are actually uh, able to, uh, to, to sign the, uh, the patch file. Then uh, Robert will build the patch uh, using the assigned pipe file. And uh, of course, then we test it and then make it available uh, on our uh, mirror. That's roughly our process for uh, dealing with errata, but it's not set in stone. Can vary from time to time. So that's actually uh, on AMD64 and i386. Those are actually the uh, build machine for syspatch. So they're quite small. Um, they are built on uh, machines that don't have any access <coughs> to uh, the internet. Um, and we, for each patch, we do a complete uh, rebuild of the release. Um, I will go into that a bit later. Um, there are different types of, uh, of patches. Uh, we have kernel, we have user land, in which case we build an entire release, or we have uh, Xenocara or uh, Xorg implementation, and in which case we rebuild the complete uh, x.org. Um, of course, all the patches are installed on the build machine, uh, and all the, the, the result of building a uh, release, a uh, patched release, will be put into a fake root directory. The patch are created by basically diffing uh, our current fake root with the previous one. And that's how we know what's changed between uh, uh, the release and the patched one. Yes? USB. And yes, and, si and the initial fake root directory is just the, uh, the extracted official release. So we have a we have a make file for that uh, because it's his patch Um I won't go too much into the details; not <coughs> interesting. But basically, we we stripped a bit what uh, the uh, OpenBSD release process does, um, as well as some part of the port tree, and we assemble them uh, into the uh, into this file. Um, so we fetch and verify the patch with signify. Uh, we create a fake root uh, using the no perm option because we don't build as I mean we're to build as root, but we are losing privileges quite early. So uh, when we install file, we need to be able to install them owned by root, etc. So we're using a no perm uh, mount option for that. And then we diff the current built fake root against the, uh, the, uh, the former one and create the, uh, the syspatch torbal. So, um, the main issue uh, we had when we first started implementing syspatch is that on OpenBSD, we don't have reproducible build. Uh, there is no effort whatsoever into, uh, into that right now. So we didn't look for reproducible build, but we looked for what I call deterministic build. Uh, that is that we know that if we build uh, this release on one machine and that release on another machine, we will end up with at least uh, the same set of build options. 
Uh, first issue we had uh, was with the, uh, the R archiver. Um, we had to implement uh, the D flag, the uh, deterministic flag, to uh, prevent some randomness in the archives. Uh, for example, we hard code uh, UID, GID, um, uh, and M time to zero, and the uh, mode to 644. Otherwise, it, was completely, it could be completely random, and we had difference in uh, like each and every uh, uh, archives. Um, so that was easy to fix. Uh, there, there was a few requirements here and there uh, to, to use that new options, but uh, that, was, uh, that was an easy fix. Um, then there was the, the timestamp of the actual archive, uh, which were obviously different from e for each build. Uh, the diff.sh script that I mentioned is actually using CMP uh, for uh, comparison of the files. Uh, and we uh, can actually use a 34 bytes offset to skip the uh, timestamp index. Uh, we were actually quite happy to see that it was uh, so easily possible. So this problem was also very easy to fix. Um, besides static archives, we also had a shared object. Um, on OpenBSD, we rebuilt all the shared objects in a completely random order. Uh, so, of course, you can imagine that when you're diffing one release with another one, that again, everything is different. So, what we did is that we basically told Syspatch to use uh, ReadDLF on the shared object of the previous fake root, the previous build, get the uh, linking order from there, and then apply it exactly in the same order when we build a release with a, a patched release. So that was a bit tricky to, uh, to get, but uh, in the end, it, uh, it, actually, it actually worked fine. Um, in the middle of, of uh, implementing Syspatch, we uh, moved from GCC to Clang, uh, at least on AMD64, i386, and ARM64. And uh, we had hit a, a few bugs uh, that were Clang-related, like uh, the assembler does not properly set uh, the dot .file directive uh, when compiling uh, assembly files. So it was missing uh, from the object, which uh, basically prevented ReadDLF um, to see them. And if they can't see them, then we can't have the, uh, the, the link order. So there was, uh, I don't think it has been fixed upstream, but there is, there is a bug report uh, about it. Uh, we also build most of our stuff uh, with minus G. And sometimes, it's not 100% reproducible. Um, the location list section uh, changes. So this particular issue is not fixed yet. Uh, what you end up basically is that you have a lot of false positives that you have to, uh, to manually edit in the peer list of the, the syspatch. It's still under investigation. We have no idea where the, uh, this, uh, this actual uh, non-deterministic thing is coming from. Um, then we had the funny stuff with, uh, with Perl. Um, the configure test for long double implementation details um, probes the content of long double length, and that gets stored in the config module. Um, but some of these bytes are currently pretty much random and vary between builds. Um, because of the long, are only 80 bits, and the remaining uh, bytes are like uninitialized. So we had, uh, it, again, it was not, not always the case. Uh, it was completely random, and it was a hard, hard one to, uh, to track down. Uh, but finally, we saw that it was fixed in Perl uh, a few months before we, we started looking uh, into it, so we just backported um, the patches. Um, there was also the case of manual pages created by Perl. Uh, for that, we uh, didn't come up uh, with any solution yet. Uh, the diff.sh script uses said to, uh, to remove the, 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 the timestamp header. Then we, are, we had a few funny things like, uh, like uh, time and date uh, that were uh, in several pieces of code within the OpenBSD source tree, uh, like to display the build date or whatever. Uh, so this one was easy. We just removed it from the code. Well, I mean, what, what use does it have? And um, also something that was really, 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 well, some, something that was really unexpected is that patches um, aren't built on the release machines. Uh, the, release, the release are actually built by uh, Theo. Uh, the patches are built by Robert. So they're not built on the same machines, obviously. 
And on OpenBSD, we don't have any automated uh, garbage collection of old files. Like for example, if we remove a header, uh, then nothing will automatically remove it from the system. You have to do that manually. Um, and we realized that actually Theo's machine had a lot of header that we didn't have that weren't cleaned. I mean, basically that doesn't, doesn't introduce any issue. But in this case for Perl, um, Perl actually picked up a op different option because the header was there. So of course the, the final binary was completely different. Um, and of course that specific issue is only re uh, relevant for the first dispatch since for the second one we compare to our own uh, built release. So what do we want to do uh, in the future? Uh, so far, the tool is very nice. It works really nicely. It's super simple. Uh, what we want to do is support more architectures, obviously. Um, I would really like if we, were, if we would be able to support uh, the current release and the previous one. So at least you have patches for an entire year. Um, that issue is, again, not technical. It's just that we don't have the manpower to do that. Um, and something I'm hopeful as well is to pave the role for stable packages. Uh, we do have stable packages as f part of the port tree, but they're not built. So it's, it's kind of a pain to, to actually maintain these. And uh, it would be also a bit nice to have a, 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 a more verbose output uh, when listing syspatch uh, like listing installed one or the, t or the, the available one because uh, the, the name are a bit, uh, a bit uh, tricky. It doesn't always, uh, doesn't always tell you where the actual patch uh, is within the source tree and what it does. I mean, 002 underscore libssl, okay, you know that's something under libssl, but you have no idea what the patch uh, fixes. So it would be nice to have that. And something else as well is that currently, um, when we install kernel patches, um, a kernel patch is not a new kernel. It's just the new object file uh, that were modified. Uh, so that means that we can, we can ship really small patches. Uh, and your kernel is basically will be recreated anyway by the uh, Carl reorder kernel uh, mechanism. So that's why we only ship uh, uh, the differing object file. The problem we have is that on OpenBSD, we have a different kernel for um, SMP machine and single processor machines. Um, so that works perfectly fine, but if you want a VM, for example, uh, you install it on a single processor machines, you patch it, and then you want to upgrade your VM to dual set CPU, four CPU, or eight CPU. Then syspatch, uh, that then the next patch, syspatch will get a kernel patch that will try to build against uh, MP machine because you are now an MP machine, but your installer will only have installed the, uh, the single processor object uh, for kernel linking. And boom. So yeah, so I hope that one day we can have one slash BSD for both MP and, uh, and SP machine. That's pretty much it. Uh, off topic, we are hiring. So if you're looking into uh, development, operations, whatever, come talk to me. Uh, we're hiring all kind of different profiles. Any questions? <coughs> yes? Um, the patches are not cumulative, right? So if you have like one, two, three, four, five, you need all of them. Yes. You can't pick one or, or the other. No. <coughs> that's, that's by design. We, we thought a lot about it, but <laughs> it's just way easier to do it this way. Yes? Tell me if there are any process needs to be restarted. Sorry? Tell me if any process needs to be restarted. No. Um, <coughs> we know how to do that. Um, I would very much like to implement it. Um, but I'm not sure how to integrate it within OpenBSD itself, uh, itself yet. Uh, there, there, there is a solution for it. Uh, I would like it personally, yeah. Yes? Choose. Uh, what is your uh, uh, feeling about people who uh, put syspatch in a cron for automatic? Uh, Whatever, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's your box. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. Uh, it's 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 not a question I can answer. I mean, it really depends on your environment. I mean, if if usually uh, patches are really well tested, uh, of course we can screw something up. Uh, I don't see. I don't see what I what I do like is having syspatch check in Chrome, but apply it. Uh, most of the time, you have to do something after you apply your patch. Like you have, a, I don't know, you have a libcrypto or whatever. You have to restart your daemon using your library anyway. So. If you try to restart syspatch, yes. oh, if you have a problem, okay. So, so the the question is, uh, what happens if during the, the run of syspatch you lose the network? Yeah. Okay. If anything happens between uh, at the moment of installation of the patch, uh, it and if any error occurs, then it will stop and roll back. So, if you lose the network, it's not installing anything. So, it will just hang or whatever. Then you can control C, and uh, there is a trap handler that will handle everything. So it's pretty safe in that regard. Of course, if you unplug your machines, then. OK, I think we're done. Thank you very much for your attention.